Hey, this is Richard Miller with Goldie May, and this is the Unrehearsed Research Series. Watch as James Tanner and I, along with invited guests, work through a genealogy problem with no script and no agenda. You might learn from the big strategy or from features in the tools, or if you see a better way to do it, please leave a comment so we can all learn. Now on to the research. Welcome to Unrehearsed Research episode 33. I'm thankful to have James Tanner here with me today, and uh, we'll look at some research from my family. James, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you today. You too. Thank you. Uh, we will share my screen. And today, James, I wanted to look at an ancestor, my Hoselton line, where, and I'm going to kind of lean on my notes here. Uh, Amanda Perkins is the, uh, the subject we want to look at, finding her parents, learning more about her. Um, she was the first wife of William Henry Hoselton, and she had a son, Judson, born in Nebraska in 1871. And then her husband remarried in 1875 uh, because we think she passed away in those intervening four years. So she lived only to be about 30 years old and kind of the points around her death uh, that we know of are her son being born in 1871 and then her husband remarrying in 1875. So I thought I would ask your help in just seeing where can we, how can we push this forward a little bit more to uh, learn more about Amanda, kind of generally in pursuit of a record that might mention her parents' names, if we could. But uh, yeah, that's the, I'll let you take it away from here and tell me where you'd like to go. Okay, well, why don't you scroll down on William and uh, let's take a look at um, his family members. Okay. So and, uh, the Permelia would be the second wife, and then she is, uh, Amanda's the first wife. And so we don't have a marriage event for them. Is that that's, that's I think the first thing I think that comes that's right. up. Yeah. So we should look at the sources and see if we just it's always nice to go through the sources because sometimes people don't quite get all of the information out of the sources mm -hmm. into the family tree. You yeah. have three marriage events down there. Uh, yeah, those would be the, the second wife second because wife. they're 75. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And let's look where the first child there. You said there was one child from this first uh, marriage. Three. Yeah. So Sherman, three. Eddie and Judson, 67. And was, where were they born? They were born in they have Illinois, born, Illinois, Iowa. Uh, and Nebraska. Is that what that one? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Nebraska. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Um, well, uh, the, the the way that we can start to resolve this is to uh, do some research on the children, on Sherman, Eddie, and Judson, and uh, starting with Sherman, of course, because uh, supposedly born in 1867. So we would have an estimated kind of ball, uh, you know, ballpark time frame for a marriage in 1866, mm -hmm. or perhaps 67 earlier in the year. That would give us at least a date. The problem we have, of course, is we don't know where Sherman was born, uh, except for Illinois, and that doesn't really help us a lot. Mm -hmm. So looking for a, a marriage record. Uh, what, what's helpful uh, is to have um, Ancestry up at the same time that you're mm -hmm. doing this research and uh, be looking at the same family on Ancestry at the same time you're looking at here. That way you get the benefits of both programs, search okay. engines. So if we have both and of those. There you're kind of thinking of the, the public member trees? Yes. For that person, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess we could take uh, William Henry Hoselton, 1843. So do you have this tree of for yourself over in Ancestry? I don't have this tree, I believe. Yeah, I don't think I have this tree. Well, this is this is my suggestion, and this is one way that I've kind of evolved over the last few years doing this, is having uh, doing simultaneous research in both programs. So I have uh, whatever part of my family tree I'm working on on family search also in my uh, family tree, my big family tree on ancestry. 
And then I'm working back and forth between the two, keeping their sources the same in both in both uh, programs. And what I found is that as I add information from Ancestry to Family Search, Family Search finds some of the same sources, but also additional sources. And then when I go back and add those sources to Ancestry, then Ancestry also finds more sources. In other words, it, they kind of feed on each other. Cool. Okay. Because they use information there. They're all, both of them seem to have algorithms that, that uh, look at additional uh, sources added, regardless of where they come from. So they okay. just look at their own sources. In my case, where I don't have a tree yet, do you like to start from somebody else's tree or just start from scratch on my own? The easiest way to do is to do another family tree and start with this guy. Okay. So you go to create manage trees uh, right there, and then you just stay a new tree. Now, if I were to show my new trees, you'd see, you know, a list like this of all the trees I've created recently, and I periodically weed them out for people that I haven't talked to for a long time. So yeah, because basically when I'm doing research for someone, I will uh, go in and do another tree for them. In other words, I'll start out with that person in family in ancestry that they give me as their search. And then I'll start building a tree right there in ancestry. Occasionally, if it turns into being pr very productive, um, I will invite them to look at the tree. And some of the people that I've done that with have taken over their trees and done a lot of research and build. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you like to, if, if it's just your ancestors and not for a friend, do you like to keep it all in one tree or still have separate oh, trees no, for your yeah. lines? No I, no, I put it all in one tree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Unless I'm uh, occasionally, uh, now, now I have exceptions, obviously there's going to be exceptions to everything. If I get out uh, way out on a line and I don't feel like I want to build the whole tree all the way out to that line, sometimes I'll just look at it out there. But mm. uh, um, that's rare. Uh, most of the okay. time, I've been building my tree on Ancestry for so long that it's, you know, I just have to go add a few people sometimes to get back to anybody that I'm looking at. Got it. Cool. Okay. Good. Well, uh, James, you want me to go ahead and build out a little tree while we're on video here? And um, we can, yeah, why don't we just put his name two in? Two couple is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I'll pull in, uh, I'll put in this William. Henry Hoselton, and we'll just let the ancestry search hints engines start working for us. All you need to do is add one person here. Just a father, for example, and then, okay. All right, so with that in place, we can just go let to, the hints start working for us. Yeah, in, go to the pedigree, the pedigree chart, the even pedigree minimum. view, I mean, landscape view. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now you already have some suggestions here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it goes pretty fast, doesn't it? Okay, so we're not gonna be able to work through all these suggestions right now. But what we want to do is go down to the two ch the children and see if ancestry happens to pick up any kind of birth date for them mm, or marriage okay. license for the family. So here's what you can do. Let's add in his, oh, his go. Uh, wife. Okay, so we'll go here. We'll add uh, spouse, and we'll do Amanda Perkins. Okay, we have these names in Ancestry, and the purpose for having them in Ancestry is to help uh, get the record matches, record hints from uh, Ancestry. You can see up there on Gunderson, Hustleton, there's already green, and on William, there are already little green leaves. That means mm -hmm. Ancestry has already suggested uh, sources for this person. So let's look at the ones for William and see real quick you have 10 of them <laughs> so it's fast <laughs> fast so now let's go down we're what we're looking for is a marriage record we can add all these in later and uh and or and then there's a marriage to permilla mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, she'll be the second wife. And we keep going. There's another one. I don't think that's the same one because it's an Anne Hutchison. All right. That's probably not the same person. That's yeah. That's I think you're right. It's a marriage in Illinois, though. Hmm. I have to think about that. Whether that could fit. And when things like this happen, it's possible. Always, you need to kind of re reevaluate all of the conclusions you've made to this point because. This may be your guy, and uh, you either may have a, another wife that you didn't have already figured out, which is possible. Possible, back the, yeah. Back in the days when people died, you know, women died regularly because they were in childbirth and got infected and died. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's not, and that's not impossible that there's another marriage there, but it's also possible that the name you have for that first wife is not correct. Yeah, you're that's totally right. right. Yeah. Okay. And that and that might be the reason why you've not found any information on her. So far. Yeah, well said. So those are the kinds of conclusions that you need to look. So let's look at that review and see if that actually is our person. If not, then it doesn't help us a lot. Yeah, William Henry Hosleton. Yeah, if I pull now, up here, Yeah, go ahead. Here, here's yeah, go ahead. There's an I was gonna, here's yeah, another, I was gonna... important thing about ancestry is when you look at that one record on the right hand side of the search there, you'll see a whole nother list of other possible uh records. Yeah, and that's that's a great so that for the example, that marriage record in Iowa and there's an Iowa marriage record Pramila, Mabel. Yeah. Okay. So great question. So if we are looking at this Ann Hutchinson, Hutchinson in McLean, Iowa, I'm looking at, you know, William, you know, lived in Marshall County, Illinois. I'd have to look up where this is. Pretty close to Peoria. Yeah, and I think the family here was just kind of generally at the bend of this Illinois River, uh, Bureau County. Oh. And there was, uh, yeah. so that. That's might probably not the same person. Be a distance, yeah, might be a little distant. Well, it, these are but the kinds not. of things that, of course, you're going to have to start looking for. And um, all right, so yeah, that, it, that may or may not be the right location for them. Uh, it may be a little distant there for where they were, but but I mean, not too bad. It's I don't know. It's it's. Thinking. 90 miles, 900 miles. Yeah, that's that's really quite a distance. Well, not okay. first of the first of the century, it would depend on what this person did for a living, how if he traveled or if he was. Um, but that's still back in the 1800s. That's not going to be that's not going to be. The, nobody would have traveled that far. OK, so maybe we. Yeah, so maybe we count out at the moment this uh, McLean marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, as I was saying, the focus we also need to add in the children because the focus is going to be on on determining if we can find any birth information for the children. Uh, this is probably before there are formal birth records being kept. Uh, we can check the year on that if we look on the, the research wiki on Family Search. Okay. And go to this go to uh the, the states involved which in their case was uh you know if we're talking about 
their children. Charmaine. He was born in Illinois. So we look in Illinois. I'm going to tell you right now without even looking that 1867 is before they began registering births okay. in Illinois. Okay. Very few of the states, um, the any of the states west of the the Appalachian Mountains or Appalachian Mountains are uh, probably going to be in the latter half of or 1880 to 1900 before oh, they start okay. recording birth information on a state basis. Okay. So yeah, might not much might not be much help there. So we're going to be looking for births birth substitutes, um, records that would show us later on in their life where they were born. So do we have those people in a, in a, a census record, for example? That would I think that is time. where they come from, which is... Uh... So the state is probably came from the mention in the census records. About yeah, I that. think that's right. So yeah, Amanda, Illinois, Stephen here, but we I think we're saying Sherman, but uh, Illinois, Eddie, all Illinois. The father, okay. New York. Okay. So that's that's is, you know that's so we haven't really gone anything past uh, the information that would have been in in. Uh, so do we know where he was born? Where the father? Well, he was born in New York. Amanda mm -hmm. was born in Illinois, and we don't have a mar marriage record, or so we're going to have to work sort of backwards from the children and look for their records, and at the same time for the mother's records to see whether or not we can find an additional information that would help us to know about the marriage and the timing okay. of how all this occurred. So there's there's a couple of ways of looking at this. Right now, it would appear that with the census records and some of the other records that I, that were we looked at quick, very very quickly on the sources, that there are things that tie these people together. It's pretty sure that he had um, that William had a first wife and a second wife. Uh, the children are all going to show up on census records, and if they're there after she died, then they're going to be showed up with their new stepmother. Mm -hmm. So those are kinds of things that confirm that that all occurred. The kind of the the detail issue is: Do we really have a record showing they got married? The answer is: Well, there are a number of different choices. One is they never did get married. Number two is they they did get married, but in a place that was that's unexpected. There are people do travel to go to get places and get married, and they were doing that around the turn of the century and earlier. They're back I mean, many years earlier than that. So, for instance, today people go to Niagara Falls or Las Vegas or different places to get married and then the records never in the state where they live yeah <laughs> and so that just kind of throws everything off and that was happening back then there were places uh, where they would go to get married uh, that was a kind of a tradition in each town it might be up in the mountains it might be you know wherever hmm. so that's the that's the problem and and the fact that you uh, don't ever find a marriage certificate is goes back to one of the rules of genealogy that says uh, uh, absence of a death certificate does not mean the person is still alive. And so the corollary here is that absence of a marriage record doesn't mean they weren't married, but we just haven't found it, right? Yeah, and and to spend your life looking for that marriage record may not be productive. I see. Yeah, because it's just it's it's not something that that changes the names or the people that are now on this list because we have a family identified. Um, obviously, with the amount of research that's been done on the children, that would be productive in getting more and more information, but they may still never turn up any record that says that when their parents got married. Yeah, okay. The other thing that would be to confirm it uh, would be if the person didn't have a second wife would be to look at a uh, probate record for William to see who he 
if 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 his wife survives him if he left money to her to somebody okay and sometimes when they have a a blended family like this they may very well in their their will or in their probate records there may very well say uh i leave to stephen my son of my first wife you know oh cool okay so those are the kinds of things that that help us to sort out the the questions but finding the actual record is incidental okay another one there's other ways i mean i could go on listing for like two hours and you we'd all go to sleep but uh there's lots of different ways to determine uh, the marriage one of them for instance would be uh, any deed a uh, property deed real property deed signed by william at the same time that he was married to amanda if i mean if he was married then they that deed would show her as uh, the wife of amanda if it was not in there then you would look for uh, where he sold the property, if he sold the property, and then she would have had to have signed what's called a disclaimer deed, or there would have been a cloud on the title to that property. So there's some other comp more, even more complicated ways of determining the marriage relationship. But they're, okay. they're not crucial to understanding or, or having, you know, the basic idea that here we have this family. Good. So. Okay. James, what what's the takeaway from what we've seen today? Well, the 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 objective of what we did today was to determine when this marriage occurred, more information about this first wife, and uh, the research had yet to to show where she was born or any kind of information about her. She's sort of an end of line person in this particular relationship, and the suggestions are, and after examining this. The main issue here is to do more research on the children of the marriage, if there are any. But in this case, there are three. And so each of those children, and then add in the research that could be obtained from uh, another website like Ancestry.com that would give us even more information and more access to more records that perhaps are not in family search. Great. Okay. All right. Well, James, thank you. I appreciate your time today. Thanks for coming on and uh, hope okay. you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you later.